So how do we create these interconnected networks? What, yeah. what would your view be about creating interconnected networks of compassion oriented individuals? I think there's a line from William Faulkner, something like the past is not even past. You know, it's present, it's here with us today. And I also think about one of, one of the great writers to come out of Great Britain, George Orwell, who said something like, to see what is in front of one's nose takes a constant effort. We are the proverbial fish living in the water. We don't quite realize it, how bizarre uh, the ways in which much of society uh, proceeds in contrast to our hunter-gatherer history during most of our 300,000 year ter term so far, anatomically modern humans, with another couple million years before that of tool manufacturing pretty intelligent hominids, right, in hunter-gatherer bands. So, so here we are. I want to say first that about privilege or advantage, for me, it, where it becomes personal is I look out into my house, my home, and I think about, in simple terms, you know, the money that I have, and I ask myself, what fraction of that is based on virtuous effort over the years? What fraction of that is based on uh, the luck of the draw? genetic talents of different kinds, and what fraction of that is acquired through systems of advantage that disadvantage other people, ill-gotten gains, ill-gotten gains. And it's not zero, it's not 100%, but what fraction of the money in my savings account or what fraction of you know, the worth of our home uh, is based on ill-gotten gains? It's a very humbling question. And it's one that actually kind of grips me, and I'm still engaged in thinking about what to do about it. I mean, um, societally, certainly, I would absolutely vote for significant reparations for uh, African Americans and sort of Native people, and I'd be very open to thinking about other kinds of reparations as well, to do something, not perfectly, but something in the direction, substantially in the direction of leveling the playing field and, and rectifying systems of disadvantage. So for me, anyway, that's just a helpful way to think about it. Um, there is talent, there is luck, there is drive, and there is advantage. And that advantage, ill-gotten gains, uh, is something to really stare hard at. So, oh, part absolutely. one. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's why we have more responsibility. Yeah, huge, that's right. Huge and it's hard to, you have to open your heart to it and, and to realize that you didn't create the systems that advantaged you, but you know, they've advantaged you often in subtle ways in the larger competition with other people. Doors that were a little more ajar for you than for the black person next to you, equally talented, you know, conferred an advantage that accumulated over time. Okay, all that said, uh, you're yeah, going to let me rant. Important because, as you know, we talk about this. My feeling is that because if people experience shame about it, then that's yes. a tricky one. But if they can experience grief about it, to cry for the person who was disengaged, yeah. disenfranchised, to to empathically connect. And I, yeah. what would happen? You know, if you think about slavery, what would it have been like if that was my family? If I saw my wife put into change, if I saw my children put into change and thrown over, what would it be like if it was me? You see, just do that one thing. Don't get into all this issue of yeah. shame because that isn't going to do anything. Get yeah. into the process of empathic identification with what's happened and think if that were me, if that were my wife, if that were my child that was put into slavery and I saw them whipped, what would that be like? You know, so yeah. that's part of what um, we need to do with compassion is not to go around shaming and blaming, but actually to say, look, walk in the shoes of the other. Because then if you do that, that will open up your ability. So this cannot continue. This must not continue. This must be stopped because you have this empathic connection to the horror of what went on rather than thinking, oh, I'm a, this sort of person or whatever. So that's, I think that's a really important issue. Just let us be empathic to those who do not have. Let us think about how can we actually move towards providing and helping and supporting 